Hey y'all, new day, new verses. We continue on into Isaiah. Today we are starting with chapter 26 and doing verses on 1 through 3. And I think we're just going to have a break certain out a certain way and just play with it because there's such beautiful rhyming in this imagery and these posts and how the verses connect to each other for this entire chapter. So as we continue through Isaiah, especially with chapter 26 together for these next few times, it's just going to be really digging into the symmetry and the connection, how, how beautiful you can see the front and the back and the middle, and that it truly is an incredible work. I mean, an intelligence clearly at hand that makes such beautiful beautiful imagery come to life. God working with people to make such wonderful, wonderful revelation come to life as we dig into Him and let Him dig into us. And on that note, Father God, we just ask that you would send your Holy Spirit to dwell with us. Let us stop at your table that we would be able to truly have great, great, wonderful daily bread to feast upon, Lord God. Uh, je- the, uh, with the provision of fiscal needs and, and food and stuff like that and clothing. And thank you that you take care of all of it, Lord, and shelter and, and all of those needs. And we thank you, and Lord God, when there are need to be met, do above and beyond so to bring a testimony of the fact that you are just and see to it. And Lord God, and Lord God the, the daily bread I want to focus on here is the daily bread of your word. That word of uh, that you started talking about to your disciples, Lord Jesus, when you said, I already have food. When we were helping the Samaritan, being with the Samaritan woman at the well. Heavenly Father, just thank you. Thank you that you give us that kind of daily bread the daily bread that truly fills us up, truly refines us, truly helps us come to life. Wash us clean in your blood that we might walk a new, fresh, and anointed by your grace, living lives that reflect that truth and the mercy and the grace that you have shown. Lead us, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Speak, your servants are listening. Holy Spirit, dwell with them. We are yours, Lord, by the power of the blood. We praise you and thank you for your sacrifice, Jesus. You are holy, worthy, just perfect to be praised. Thank you that you dwell with us, O Emmanuel. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Getting into chapter 26. In that day, everyone in the land of Judah will sing this song. Our city is strong. We are surrounded by the walls of God's salvation. Open the gates to all who are righteous. Allow the faithful to enter. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. I just, I love this area because I've been studying a little bit about the the study and the idea and the imagery and like the woman is a a side and this architectural design and you're going way deeper because I always thought the imagery of a rib was beyond a shallow, but the idea of sides and a strong and to be made one, well, that makes a lot more sense than just a rib, but that may just be the fact that the only reason I even care about the human anatomy is because I've damaged mine quite substantially. But to wit, the the Lord will keep in perfect peace all who trust in him, all whose thoughts are fixed upon him. And doesn't he? You know, he sees to every need. And I've got a lovely testimony of perfect timing thing just before recording this and why it's a little late. It's because I was on the phone with the doctor because, well, a suddenly, you know, a slow and then a suddenly because that's how God liked to do. Slowly, waiting for the MRI, suddenly got okayed. So called them, was waiting on hold for an hour, slowly, and then suddenly got a really nice person whose name I really wish I could remember. I'm, I'll get better with names. God is helping me do it. And they were so kind. They helped me get it. And, you know, I was thinking, oh, well, I'm just the closest one to me. It would have been the 20th. And instead, by God's grace, a suddenly, I can get it tomorrow. And God is absolutely beautiful to do things like that. Because he keeps us in peace when our thoughts are focused on him, when our perspective is on him. You know, I could focus on the, oh, I've been on hold for an hour and I have, what am I ever going to do? Or I can rejoice about the fact that in that time I was able to spend it with my fiancé playing duck hunt. 
I was able to rejoice and laugh and, and think about how good God is. Because he is faithful. And in all of it, it's focusing on him. The three years apart, God is faithful. The broke it back in 2009, God is faithful. The don't know where it's coming from, God is faithful. Because the thoughts, the minds, all of it is focused on him. And when we focus on the wind and the wave, we go into the drink, just like Peter did. And it's not a finger wave of Peter in any way, shape, or form. It's a reminder. It's a reminder that when we start to go into the waves because we, oh, look, the chicken, that all we have to do is say, Lord, help, and he's right there. That when we start walking down the wrong path and end up in the thicket because we're paying attention to the wrong things, that the moment we start to turn, to repent, to look away from the thing that was killing us and look to actual life, so he's right there. And I say that it is a testimony of experience going running miles into the wrong direction. This is turned around and he's right there. Hey, kiddo, you done? Yeah, I didn't leave you. Didn't forsake you. Because that's not who he is. He loves us. And he would die in our place. That Jesus would die in our place for us. That we might be able to run to the Father. That's what our eyes are focused on. That kind of grace. Because we need to be focused in and deal with eternity. Right? Life is but temporary. Even Methuselah didn't get a full thousand years. Close. Not quite. And um, that's even if you were to take those years literally. Or imagery, I don't care. The point stands. Even he didn't get a century. Some, and the only reason I say that is because some older stories of the different areas talked about human beings living even longer than that. And all I can think to myself is, well, it doesn't matter how long you live, no human being lives forever. From the dust we came, through the dust we will return. The temporary nature of the thing is part of what adds to the beauty therein. Uh, that's here in the moment. We focus on eternity. The fact that we are from eternity and live for eternity. We live in a way that we are set apart. And the only way we can do that, the only reason we even have the ability to have a perspective of eternity is because it's his perspective. Otherwise, of course the world's going to end up going full YOLO. You only live once. <laughs> More accurately, you only hear once. Your soul will live forever. Can you live with yourself based on what you're doing here? I mean, myself, me, myself, and I, as the expression goes, I couldn't. With what I was doing, I couldn't. I saw the darkness, I saw the decay, and I saw the destruction and the ruin and the pain. And I saw moments when I didn't even have the control over it myself. It just happened, and all I could see is watch and the decimated ruin that was left behind. And those moments only happened because it was that looked away. And looked away and started lusting after what was looking away the wind and the waves started looking toward those things because they come up become idols you know why do we not have perfect peace because there are things that we need to either be praying over or praying for you know okay i'm starting to freak out about this and this and that and that okay start praying over it you've been given the victory in jesus name maslow's hierarchy of needs only applies to those who are from this world we're not we're in it, not of it. So as of hierarchy needs, doesn't apply. When we start worrying about things on that particular pyramid, we start praying for it and praying over it more accurately. We pray that God will see to it because he does. And it's when it's something that becomes a distraction, an idol. You know, getting that next pay grade, getting that next promotion, getting to the point where getting it becomes more important than being godly. Because, okay, yeah, 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 but what would you trade your, whole, your soul for? Yeah, you've got the corner office, but can you live with how you got it? I mean, there's a reason that the, that the ancient world has ideas about chickens coming home to roost, and granted, it's an adage that has been a while around, but it's wisdom that has been around forever. And it's understanding because actions have consequences. You know, sin 
causes death. The wages of sin are death. He said we can either focus on the ruin we cause or we can focus on the one who makes us whole and live in righteousness. Because righteousness is right relationship. How do we expect to have a right relationship with people if we don't have the right relationship with God? If we don't have the perspective that he is king, we are not. Even an actual monarch king is but a prince. A prince that God placed there. One that should be prayed for. Because God put him there. You don't pray for your leaders. It's a thing for a reason. And leaders need prayer. Especially the more you weight you put on the, with uh, being a leader, the more prayer you need. The more prayer you want. And then again, I mean, who doesn't want prayer? Is what is you got right there, right? Open the gates to all who are righteous. Allow the faithful to enter. The only way we're righteous is by the blood of the Lamb. We only have the ability to have right relationships with other people because we have right relationship with Jesus. We understand that He loves us that much, and that our will is the thing that's causing the problem in the first place. It's like, oh, that means you don't have free will. No, 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 no. We have free will. That it's. Your will be done, Lord. Your kingdom come. Because if it were our own will, how's that been going for the last pickle while? I mean, there are times when we will lead ourselves into the... There are times when the Holy Spirit will lead us into the wilderness for testing. And there are times when we will end up there of our own accord. And God will use it, and God will watch it. The question is, who or what are our thoughts fixed upon? If they're focused on a what, it's an idol. If they're focused on a who, then which who? Because even a spouse can be an idol. A kid can be an idol. Even a fur baby can be an idol. He's got to be God first. And the reason for that is because only in right relationship with God can we have right relationships with others. We're surrounded by God's salvation. We are protected and set apart by the blood of the Lamb. And he has these beautiful verses right here. Our city is strong. That new Jerusalem that we hail from, the true city of peace, the heavenly Jerusalem. You're starting to get a kingdom mindset. Yahweh is our king. Jesus is our king. We focus on him. He is the one who said it right. He is the one who we exalt and praise and say Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And we say it because it's truth. We say it because he has made things right between God and us. And because that grace has been shown out, that mercy has been poured out, how much more so does it get easier as we dig into it to show it to others? To see in all four Gospels a very rounded form of living out how we are called. And that means putting everything below the Lord. Because if our thoughts are fixed on the Lord, if our trust is in the Lord, then we will be in perfect peace. Because it's, it's in here, it's a promise. It's one echoed in Hebrews, if memory serves. If we trust in the Lord, we will have perfect peace because he is the king of Shalom. Does that mean it will be the easiest thing in the world? No. It, neither is putting a deck of cards back together after somebody plays 52 pickup. It takes a second. But if we're trusting his hands being the one to build rather than our own, and then he is using our lives to be a blessing for others. An intimately woven dance creating a beautiful tapestry of praises to our God. Each one of our lives a brick fitted into his temple. Each one of us a citizen of his city. Because we have cried out and trust him as our king. That's it. That's all we have to do. That's all we're called to do. 
those who call upon the name of the Lord and leave shall be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord. Fix your eyes upon Him and know, K-N-O-W, that when you're up to a sea's edge, He'll either bring forth dry land, make it so you can walk on top of the water, or give you wings to fly. And that's just off the top of my head. He likes to do even cooler things than that. So when you're at the water's edge, don't cry out, what will we do now? Cry out, what will you do next, Papa? Because he can, and he will, and he did. And it's in here that we look backward to remember that he is true then so that we can have a peace about what comes next and know that now is a place where he has us exactly where he wants us, refining us, making us new, making us whole, making us bold, making us his. May the favor of the Lord be upon you. I'll see you next time. God willing, I'll see you then.